Hello guys, uh, decided to uh, kick my webcam and still using my PS Vita. I'm just going to uh, pre-record some of these giveaways because the quality of it's just going to be better. I mean, that's that. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and get started here. And, and more than that, you can actually, I checked this out. Uh, let me just go down here. Um, you can actually see the name of the people that I'm wonder trading as well, which is, which is kind of better than before as well. A little bit extra than what we had before. As before, I was only showing the top screen. It was limited to the quality of a really shitty Logitech web eye. So at least now you can. You can at least see a little bit of the other screen this way, I figure. And the quality will be tremendously better than the previous videos. Ironically, uh, Logitech can't make a web eye for a reasonable price that does a good job, so... They want $100 for the decent one. And to that we say, kiss our ass. Let us shout. So, uh, that's what I told everyone. Let's see, alright, Wonder Tree. Yes. So right, we're gonna give away some U2s. Let me set this up. Uh, this is my Elite Four sweeping U2. Get this up a little bit for you here. Let's see it better. There we go. Alright, uh, this new 2 has Ice Punch, which will kill the Dragon Trainer of the Elite Four. Aura Sphere, which will kill the Steel Trainer of the Elite Four. Thunder Punch, which will kill the Water Trainer of the Elite Four. And Side Strike, which will kill the Fire Trainer of the Elite Four. So I use him with these four moves to sweep the Elite Four. And he's very, very useful in that way. On top of the fact that, you know, his stats are pretty ridiculous. And uh, when you give him a Mega Stone, he's all that much more ridiculous. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I set this guy, I, I usually set my Mewtwo's up to kind of sweep the Elite Four. I mean, his poker, so you can spread it to the rest of the people in your party, etc. So let's let's give away uh, this whole friggin' box of Mewtwo's right here. These Mewtwo clones. XYHacks.blogspot promotionals. Send them all out. And so we have Grant from Canada, Ontario, Canada. So you can't really see the location of where they're being traded, but at least you can see the name of the person being traded now. And that's a little something more than we'd had previously. Let's see if I can adjust this camera a little bit. Get a little bit more in there. Without losing any of the top screen. There, and that should give you guys a view of the whole damn thing. Both screens, anyway. Okay, and this is my Pokemon Y cartridge. Anyways, curious. Still got to work on my uh, national for my Y cartridge. 
to unlock my shiny charm on my X cartridge. I've got 718 Pokemon, which unlocked a uh, gift from Sycamore. He gave me shiny charm as well as an oval charm. And the shiny charm increases the chances of finding a shiny in the wild, which is cool. All right, there we go. So now you can see the location of where it's being traded from as well. At the base of the screen. <laughs> and with the lighting of the uh, DS gonna be the kind of uh, who's that Pokemon thing when they come down at the end. <laughs> it almost looks like a silhouette. But the point is so you guys can see us trading these away. You guys can see them going on over Wonder Train. Out to the masses. And the color is actually better on the Vita than it is uh, if I use a web eye too. It's usually read the text and things of that nature. So. Now let's just see if I take this up here. Color a little better at that angle. It looks like you would. Actually. Question is, will the DS stay there? We're still experimenting with it. Just want to get something where I can uh, show you guys the giveaways and it be, uh, you know, good enough quality for you to see the Pokemon we're giving away, where it's going, etc. It doesn't have to be perfect, but god damn it, I want it to be viewable. <laughs> It was a trick enough to get my PS Vita mounted this way. I'll let you guys guess how I managed this. thing I wanted to test to see if I can play audio in the background and you guys would be able to hear it. Sometimes I like to play a little George Carlin or something while we're trading.
words. I'm trying to decide what to call these words, man. I'm trying to decide what to call this whole thing. I mean, what are these words that I'm talking about? They're just words that we've decided, sort of decided, not to use all the time. That's about the only thing you can really say about them for sure. That they're just some words, not many either, just a few, that we've decided, well, we won't use them all the time. Sometimes, well, hell yeah. Sometimes it's okay, but not all the time. That's, and they're the only words that seem to have that restriction. I mean, there are a lot of words you can say whenever you want, you know. Pneumonia! Nobody gives you a lot of words. <laughs> you can't yell in the hospital a great deal, but what the hell? There are words that you can say, no problem. Topography! No one has ever gone to jail for screaming topography. But there are some words that you can go to jail for. There are some words that we just have decided we will not say all the time. Sometimes, okay, if you're running through the jungle chasing somebody that we're at war with, you can holler them. If you're shooting a criminal, it's okay. It's the all-American thing. Dirty fucking group. <laughs> but if you're with the bishop's wife at lunch, it's better not to ask them a goddamn lettuce. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just like we've decided no way. to be some words we won't say all the time. And I was just trying to Apparently find turning the 3D word. on sure. helps the uh, quality a bit. Because nobody gives you a list. That's the problem. Well, you know. They don't give you a list. Wouldn't you think it would be normal if they didn't want you to say something and tell you what it yeah. is? Nobody even tells you when you're a kid what the words are that you're supposed to avoid. You have to say them to find out which ones they are. Shit! six years old now and here's the list of words your dad and I don't ever want to hear you say oh hey thanks ma boy that's gonna shave me an ass kicking it too <laughs> yeah you never know what's gonna be on the list cause it's always somebody else's list you didn't make that up somebody told you that shit they told you better, better not say that, so you go, and you don't know what's going to be on their list, God, people's lists even change from day to day, some people on Friday night got a list, you know, not about two or three words, Sunday morning, God damn, they made 27 words, these are the same people two days later, different list, so you got to kind of watch out what you're going to believe from them, the trouble is, I was trying to find out what these words might be, and I wanted to know the ones that you could never say on television, I mean the filthy words that are always filthy, there are a lot of these little two-way, double entendre words that have two meanings, words that are okay part of the time. I call them like part-time filth, some of these words. They're only 50% dirty. You have words like ass. Ass is hardly even a dirty word anymore, but it has a few meanings that you can't say on television. That's what I was talking about. What can you say on television? That's another one of those places where we can't use these words all the time. But some of them are all right some of the time. Ass is all right on television. You can say on television things like, well, you've made a perfect ass of yourself tonight. But you can't say, hey, let's go get some ass. <laughs> Bitch is another word like that, same kind of word, it's only dirty part of the time, depends on what you mean by bitch. You might be the lady from the San Diego Zoo visiting one of the Tonight Shows, and you might just have a bunch of little canines with you there, one of them is a female, and you say, there's the bitch, Johnny, and it's okay, fine. Just don't refer to the singer the same way. That's... Is that bitch going to do another number? Yes. <laughs> Animals are fine on those two-way words, and that's it, that's what I was trying to find, the words that were always dirty, not just part of the time. But completely filth. Well, in, in looking for these words, I kept finding new categories. We have so many ways of describing these dirty words. It's, well, we have more ways to describe dirty words than we actually have dirty words. That seems a little strange to me. It seems to indicate that somebody was awfully interested in these words. They kept referring to them. They called them bad words, dirty. Filthy, foul, vile, vulgar, coarse, in poor taste, unseemly, street talk, gutter talk, locker room language, barracks talk, bawdy, naughty, saucy, raunchy, 
rude, crude, lewd, lascivious, indecent, profane, obscene, blue, off-color, <laughs> risque, suggestive, cursing, cussing, swearing, and all I could think of was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. <laughs> Cocksuck a motherfucker and tits. That was my original list. I knew it wasn't complete, but it was a starter set. Shit, piss, fuck. Yes, WBAI is the one who played them. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksuck a motherfucker and tits. Now that was the original list. We've added a few words since then. We've added fart, turd, and twat. I know there are some other words that many of you are wondering about, why they haven't been considered, why they haven't shown up on the list thus far. We're looking at them all very closely. Some of your favorites might make the list this year. <laughs> Asshole, ball bag, hard on, piss hard, blue balls, taint, nookie, snatch box, pussy, pecker, peckerhead, pecker tracks, jism, joint, doniker, dork, twin tang. <laughs> dingleberry, a very popular word. And to my way of thinking, dingleberry, a rather innocent sounding word. Dingleberry sounds Christmassy to me, you know. <laughs> Let's put one on the tree, Dad. I would have been out here a little bit sooner, but they gave me uh, the wrong dressing room, and I couldn't find any place to put my stuff. And I don't know how you are, but I need a place to put my stuff. So that's what I've been doing back there, just trying to find you know how important that is. That's the whole that's the whole meaning of life, isn't it? Trying to find a place for your stuff. That's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. You could just walk around all the time. That's all your house is. It's a pile of stuff with a cover on it. You see that when you take off in an airplane and you look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody's got their own pile of stuff. And when you leave your stuff, you've got to lock it up. Wouldn't want somebody to come by and take some of your stuff. They always take the good stuff. They don't bother with that crap you're saving. Ain't nobody interested in your fourth grade arithmetic papers. They're looking for the good stuff. That's all your house is. It's a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Now, sometimes, sometimes you've got to move. you got to get a bigger house. Why? Too much stuff. some of your stuff in storage. Now imagine that. There's a whole industry based on keeping an eye on your stuff. Enough about your stuff. Let's talk about other people's stuff. Did you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house, you never quite feel 100% at home? You know why? No room for your stuff. Somebody else's stuff is all over the place. What awful stuff it is. overnight at someone's house, you know, unexpectedly, and they give you a little room to sleep in that they don't use that often. Someone died in it 11 years ago, and they haven't moved any of his stuff. Or wherever they give you to sleep, usually right near the bed, there's a dresser, and there's never any room on the dresser for your stuff. Someone else's shit is on the dresser. Have you noticed that their stuff is shit, and your shit is stuff? some of your stuff with you. You can't bring all your stuff. Just the stuff you really like. The stuff that fits you well that month. Let's say you're going to go to Honolulu. You're going to go all the way to Honolulu. You've got to take two big bags of stuff. Plus your carry-on stuff. Plus the stuff in your pockets. You get all the way to Honolulu and you get in your hotel room and you start to put away your stuff. That's the first thing you do in a hotel room is put away your stuff. Now put some stuff in here, put some stuff in there. There's another place for stuff here. I'll put some stuff over there. You put your stuff over there. I'll put my stuff over here. There's another place for stuff. Hey, we got more places than we've got stuff. We're going to have to buy more stuff. <laughs> Thousands of miles from home, and you don't quite feel at ease 
just let you know that you must be okay because you do have some of your stuff with you. And you relax in Honolulu on that basis. That's when your friend from Maui calls. This is hey, why don't you come over to Maui for the weekend? Spend a couple of nights over here. Oh, shit, no. Now what stuff do you bring? Right, you've got to bring an even smaller version of your stuff. Just enough stuff for a weekend on Maui. And you get over and you're really spread out now. You've got shit all over the world. Stuff at home, stuff in storage, stuff in Honolulu, stuff in Maui, stuff in your pocket. Supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain. <laughs> but you get over to your friend's house in Maui and they give you a little place to sleep and there's a little window ledge or some kind of a small shelf and there's not much room out, but it's okay because you don't have much stuff now. And you put what stuff you do have up there? You put your imported French toenail clippers, your old readers with a 45 day guarantee. <laughs> Floss and your Afrin 12 hour decongestant nasal spray. You know you're a long way from home, you know that you must be okay because you do have your Afrin 12 hour decongestant nasal spray. And you relax in Maui on that basis. That's when your friend says, Hey, I think tonight we'll go over the other side of the island and stay at my friend's house overnight. Just bring the things you know you're gonna need. Money, keys, comb, wallet, lighter, hanky pen, cigarettes, contraceptives, Vaseline, whips, jeans, whistles, still goes in a bar. These are just plain old words that are sort of fun to uh, think of or look at more closely than usual. Things like hot water heater. Do you ever think? hot water heaters? Pardon me, I said. I'd like to buy a hot water heater. <laughs> what the hell for? Hot water doesn't need to be heated. You must want a cold water heater. How about a hot water cooler? <laughs> yeah, some words are fun. Words like flammable, flammable, inflammable, and non-inflammable. <laughs> Why are there three? Listen to you as though two words ought to be able to handle that idea. I mean, either the thing flams or it doesn't flam. Flammable, flammable, that's the one that's on the side of the truck. Flammable. As if you're going to get out of your car at 60 miles an hour and smoke on his truck. <laughs> flammable, I found out the reason it says that on the truck is so that just in case you should be spinning out of control at 70 or 80, heading for the truck, you'll know what it was that happened. <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit about baseball and football. Yeah! Starting with baseball, baseball is different from any other sport in a lot of different little ways. For instance, in most sports, you score points or you score goals. In baseball, you score runs. In most sports, the ball or the object is put in play by the offensive team. In baseball, the defense puts the ball in play, and only the defensive team is allowed to touch the ball. In fact, in baseball, if an offensive player touches the ball intentionally, he's out. Also, most sports, the team is run by a coach. In baseball, the team is run by a manager, and only in baseball does the manager or the coach have to wear the same uniform the players do. Can you picture Bill Parcells in his New York Giants uniform? Baseball and football are different from one another in other kind of interesting ways, I think. First of all, um, baseball is a 19th century pastoral game. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. Baseball is played on a diamond in a park. The baseball park. Football 
was played on a gridiron in a stadium, sometimes called Soldier Field or War Memorial Stadium. Baseball begins in the spring, the season of new life. Football begins in the fall, when everything is dying. In football, you wear a helmet. In baseball, you wear a cap. Football is concerned with downs. What down is it? Baseball is concerned with ups. Who's up? Are you up? I'm not up. He's up. Football, the specialist comes in to kick. In baseball, the specialist comes in to relieve someone. <laughs> in football, you receive a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. Whoops! <laughs> Football has hitting, clipping, spearing, blocking, piling on, late hitting, unnecessary roughness, and personal fouls. Baseball has the sacrifice. Football is played in any kind of weather. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, mud. Can't read the numbers on the field. Can't read the yard markers. Can't read the players' numbers. The struggle will continue. In baseball, if it rains, we don't come out to play. I can't come out to play. <laughs>